What's up guys, today we're going to talk about Game of Thrones Season 7, Episode 2, Stormborn. Okay, so first things first, I made a few predictions in my last video. Let's see how I did. I'm actually pretty sure that Sir Jor is gonna get cured. I feel like he's gonna get cured by the Red Woman. I'm not sure if it's confirmed that this is how Stannis' daughter got killed, but Stannis' daughter had the sickness on her face, and Stannis scoured the earth for a cure for his daughter, and he ended up marrying the Red Woman, and I'm pretty sure the two are connected, even if it wasn't explicitly stated. Yeah, although I thought it totally would make sense for the Red Woman to be the person to cure Sir Jor, because she was heading south, and the only other person who is known to have survived from Grayscale, at least to the audience, was Stannis' daughter. And I figured that the Red Woman had something to do with curing Stannis' daughter, because Stannis was really loyal to the Red Woman and to the Lord of Light, and I figured the Lord of Light, through the Red Woman curing his daughter, would probably be the thing that made him a believer. I was totally wrong about that. Apparently Sam is the one who's gonna cure Jorah, and he's gonna do it by peeling off all the Grayscale all over his body. Again, I'm sorry. Please try not to scream. <laughs> Which really looks like it hurts, it was really disgusting. And by the way, heads up to everybody in the comments who said Sam would find the cure for Jorah. Although you are wrong about the method. A lot of you kept saying that he was going to eat a bunch of dragon glass and then that would cure him. Turns out that's not it. Remove the grayscale, put an ointment on, and you're cured. Considering the story of Stannis scouring the world, it seems very anticlimactic. But then again, the season's only seven episodes long, we want Jorah back, so I guess they have to rush some things. Alright, so the next thing I talked about wasn't actually in my video, but it was in reply to a comment on my video, and that was about Nymeria. I left it out of the video because it just fucking escaped my mind when I was shooting it, but I saw in the preview Arya's direwolf, and I figured that they were gonna reunite, and they did, and Arya's direwolf has a whole pack of wolves, and then they left. Look, I'm not a book reader, but I exist on the internet, so I do encounter spoilers from the book. I get that the whole direwolf pack thing is a big thing in the book, but in the show it just felt like an easter egg, like a member berry or nod to the book readers. The only thematic role that it played was to show that the wolves are all like their owners. <laughs> If you remember, Sansa's wolf lady was executed by Ned Stark as punishment for something that Arya did, and Sansa throughout the series gets repeatedly abused because of her family name, and not necessarily due to her own actions. Rob Stark's wolf was killed in captivity, Rob Stark was killed in a trap at the Red Wedding, Rickon's wolf was killed off screen like he was completely unimportant, Rickon is the least important Stark throughout the series, I don't even think he said a word throughout the series. Don't fact check me on that, it's hyperbole, and I have a theory about the way Bran's wolf died that I'll save for another video. My next prediction was about the little misdirect about not being able to trust the Targaryen where they just cut to Jon. So when that guy's yelling about never being able to trust the Targaryen, he's probably yelling that at Jon in reference to Daenerys because Jon would most likely cut a deal for the Dragonglass because it's that epic. Of course if you know the history of Game of Thrones you'll know that Ned Stark's father and Ned Stark's older brother were assassinated by the Mad King. I said that it would be a conversation about Daenerys it turned out to nearly be a word-for-word -word conversation about Daenerys. They even brought up what happened to Jon's grandfather, Ned's father. Have you forgotten what happened to our grandfather? The Mad King invited him to King's Landing and roasted him alive. All right, so on to the episode. We start with all the power brokers in Daenerys' alliance. We have Daenerys, Tyrion, Lord Varys, Olena Tyrell. Random fact, if you look at old photos of the woman who plays Olena Tyrell, you actually see that her younger self looks like the actress that plays Queen Marjorie. Just thought that was cool, wanted to share. And we have Tamari, the Sand Villager, the Dornish girl. Yeah, her. And they're all in a meeting discussing their invasion of Westeros. And basically the meeting goes like this. Olena Tyrell and the Dornish Queen want Daenerys to attack King's Landing right away. However, Tyrion believes that this is going to be a political nightmare because all of Daenerys' forces, the Dothraki and the Unsullied, are foreign forces. That and the dragons will make Daenerys seem like a foreign conqueror, not the true queen of Westeros. And he fears that Cersei will use the threat of foreign invaders to rally the other houses against Daenerys. Tyrion believes that Daenerys and her forces should take Casterly Rock, 
and the Dornish and the Tyrells should take King's Landing. Now Tyrion's plan makes a shit ton of sense on paper, but I think this is the beginning of Tyrion's folly. You see, he makes a few mistakes. If you remember a conversation that Tywin Lannister had with Cersei, Castle Rock isn't as valuable as it used to be. All the Lannister gold mines are dry, so other than cutting off a Lannister retreat and the symbolic victory of capturing their homeland, Casterly Rock has no real value to Daenerys. The second problem with Tyrion's plan is that he doesn't know that the Greyjoys have aligned with Xerxes, and that's what we're gonna get into a little bit later. Anyway, so after the meeting, Olena Tyrell decides that she wants to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Daenerys. And this conversation is probably one of my favorite non-action moments within the series. He's a clever man, your hand. I've known a great many clever men. I've outlived them all. You know why? I ignored them. The lords of Westeros are sheep. Are you a sheep? No. You're a dragon. Be a dragon. She tells Daenerys that she shouldn't put all her faith in Tyrion because he's smart, and that she should embrace her inner dragon because that's who she is. As somebody who personally doesn't want to see Daenerys sit on the Iron Throne and actually wants her to become a villain, the Mad Queen, if you will. I think this is great from my point of view and from the show's point of view. Later in the episode, part of Tyrion's plan fails, so this could tilt Daenerys to becoming the more vicious ruler that I feel like she's been this whole time. Now there's actually some backlash against this scene on the interwebs, and I think it has a lot to do with the writers talking on the After Thrones thing that they usually show after the credits of Game of Thrones, where they summarize the important parts of the episode. They made a point to highlight the fact that this is a big thing for a TV show to have all these women's here. And they try to push that feminism angle. And here's the thing, when watching any TV show, you have to separate the external politics that seem to surround and pollute everything in our society from the actual work. In the show's universe, everybody sitting at that table, except for maybe the Dornish woman, deserve to be there and their character arcs brought them there. The Dornish arc was by far the weakest of all the arcs and the fact that they were just there because they didn't like the Lannisters didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I mean if you remember she's the one who pulled in Olena Tyrell to get her to join her rebellion against Cersei. So it's a little weird that she would immediately submit to Daenerys Targaryen. And if you're gonna say well Daenerys has the dragons, well Dorne actually resisted the original conquest by the Targaryens for over a hundred years and that's when the Targaryens had the dragons. So of all the people, she seems the most shoehorned in there, but everybody else belongs there. So I'm willing to separate the external politics of the series aside and enjoy that scene as it fits within the Game of Thrones universe. All right, so let's update on the King of the North. Like I said in the last episode, I figured Jon Snow was gonna figure out A, that there's a lot of dragon glass at Dragonstone, and B, that Daenerys Targaryen was at Dragonstone. He found out both of those things and he's actually heading south to see Daenerys. I was also worried about Sansa and the other northern lords rebelling against Jon and it seems like the seeds planted in the last episode are going to grow going forward. Sansa doesn't think it's a good idea for Jon to go. Most of the northern lords agree. Even Lady Mormont, who's the most loyal to Jon, doesn't think he should go down south. But Jon decides to do what he thinks is right anyway because he's seen the army of the dead and they have it. The reason I'm kind of worried about Jon Snow is this is exactly what got him killed the last time. He saw the army of the dead, he was put in a position of power, and he made decisions that his underlings didn't like because he knew it was right. That got him killed before and I'm really hoping it doesn't get him killed again. He also decides that Sansa will be the Warden of the North in his absence and he leaves for Dragonstone. And then you just see one of the smartest and most clever men in all of Winterfell, Littlefinger, give a big ass smile. Because early in the episode he realized that he was gonna get nowhere manipulating Jon. I love Sansa, as I loved her mother. <laughs> but he thinks he still has a chance with Sansa and the other northern houses. Also, Lord Baelish is essentially the Lord of the Vale, and they're really powerful in the north, so it's not looking good for Jon. So now that we got all that out of the way, let's talk about the Battle of the Ironborn. <laughs> Yoran Greyjoy was pumping himself up for a long time, so it was really cool to see him take action. He intercepts Theon, his sister, and the head of Dorne, who I'm never gonna remember her name, and completely blows them out of the fucking water. He killed two of the three Dornish sisters himself, which included him hanging one at the front of his ship. He captured his niece, scared away Theon, captured the Queen of Dorne, and the remaining Dornish sister. Pretty fucking good haul. And if not for Daenerys splitting up her forces in the way that Tyrion suggested, it would not have gone down like that. So right now Euron has his gift for Cersei 
and he has his niece who's the only person who could challenge his claim to the Iron Island. And since there were no dragons, he didn't even need the giant crossbow from the Hobbit to do it. So all in all, I think it's a pretty good episode. I think it sets up Daenerys to become more of a villain, to become the Mad Queen. And it's not looking good for Jon or Tyrion. Also, Cersei won, Daenerys zero. As for the preview, it's pretty straightforward. Euron is going back to King's Landing and he's greeted like a hero. I believe that he's going to have the Dornish Queen and the Dornish Sister as the gifts that he promised Cersei Lannister. I think Cersei will turn down his marriage proposal, but he has secured himself as an ally to King's Landing. We also get shots of the Unsullied taking Castle Rock. I think that they're going to take Castle Rock pretty easily, but like I said before, I don't think it's going to be as valuable as they thought it would. And in the next episode, it's going to be revealed to Daenerys that the Lannister well that is supposed to be at Castle Rock is not there, which is also going to hurt Tyrion. Also, we get a shot of Jon Snow and Daenerys meeting. They probably should have saved this for the episode, if I'm being perfectly honest. But since we did see it and we know what's going to happen, what do you think Jon's going to do? A, bend the knee. B, not bend the knee. Or C, they're literally going to meet in the last second of the episode and then it's going to cut off. Anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. Let me know what you think of the episode in the comments. Remember to like this video if you like it. Subscribe for more content. Support me on PayPal. Till next time.